Mark chapter 2, verse 18. Now, Jesus has just bawled out the Pharisees and scribes for their second time complaining against Jesus. Jesus is at the house of Matthew, or Levi, the tax collector. And we give the statement, you know, the whole have no need of physician, but they that are sick, which you can go see a doctor. But I advise you, seek God first. But, I mean, if it's a medical emergency, get yourself over to the emergency room. While you get there, pray. He says, and the disciples of John, John had disciples, and the Pharisees, the Pharisees had disciples. And what you're going to have is the disciples of John start mingling over to Jesus, while some still remain faithful to John until he dies. He's beheaded in prison. Well, if the Pharisees starts losing, Disciples, members, such as Nicodemus and Joseph Armila, who were part of the council and were for Jesus. And they only stayed because, you know, fear. Because once a Jew gave over to Jesus, even to today, there, you know, there's a mock funeral and everything. Used to fast. And it's interesting because I was looking at that word used to fast. And I checked Matthew and I checked Luke and there's a lot of things you used to. I used to be until the Lord does something I used to be a street preacher until my health took a serious turn. So did they fast and then no longer fast? They come and say unto him, Jesus, Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast now? Well, the, first of all, they're at a house with food, a meal. But this thing of fasting, and there's many aspects that people have to fast. What they do and what they don't do. And I don't know if there's any right way or any wrong way. Fasting is you're serious, want to get God's attention. Fasting is in the Bible. And their problem is, well, okay, the disciples of yours, Jesus, they ought to be fasting when they're at a meal. I mean, I think if you're going to have a fast, I wouldn't show up at a restaurant. I was at a church and they would have these week-wide fastings and we're going to fast all week. And they ended uh, Wednesday, uh, Friday, they're going to go to a restaurant. Well, you didn't fast all week. He survives his Saturday. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast? Now, this is not Christian. Because the Christian is the bride. And the children of the bride chamber is those that are in with the bride as she pre prepares herself. Um, the church, the Christian, is the bride, not the children. The children of the bride chamber are Jews. This is a very important thing to see in the gospel because you will see this event is there's the bride. And there's the wedding party. And the church, again, is the bride. That's what separates the church from the Jews and then from the Gentiles. While the bridegroom is with them. And 
That's Jesus, the bridegroom. As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Cannot. There's no option. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then shall they fast in those days. Well, here he goes already. We are in chapter 2. And he's already saying, listen, I'm going away. And the disciples are there to hear it. We are called upon as Christians, as the bride, while Christ is away. We are called to fast and pray. Once we are with the bridegroom, there's no need to fast. No man soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Okay, we got two things here in 21 and 22. We got the new and we got the old. Else the new piece that fills it up, taketh away from the old. And the rent is made worse. And I've done that. I've had a pair of jeans. I tried to patch them and uh, patch and try to fix them. And it does. It just makes it worse. We used to have when we were, we were when I was a child, when our, when our jeans or pants were all messed up, mom would have those iron on patches. And you just, mom, you just might as well just put a pair of sandpaper on backwards. Because that's what those patches, they, they just wore your leg away. They're horrible. So you, you you cannot take a new piece of cloth and put it on an old garment that has a hole in it. No man putteth new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine does burst the bottles. And it, it builds up uh, inside of a gas. The wine is spilled. You don't want that. And the bottles will be marred, broken, rent. But new wine must be put into new bottles. So what the aspect is, some people, is there is a difference between the new and the old, and the old and the new. And you must decipher what to do. Now, no one who's read the Bible say, I'm just going to read the Bible. It happens upon Mark chapter 2, and they got a rip in their pants. Well, I'll, just get, I'll just get a piece of cloth, and I'll sew it up, and their rip, rips gets worse. Well, Jesus told you. And then with the wine, the old wineskin bottles, which is not really used today, but... And the aspect is... The Old Testament versus the New Testament. You can't use the New Testament to patch up any holes in the Old Testament. Okay, you leave the Old Testament as it is, and you leave the New Testament as it is, and you rightly divide. Now you can learn from both. But we are in the New Testament today on this side of Calvary. And there's nowhere in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation 66 book, there is nothing in the canon of Scripture say go build an ark in America so everybody can see it. And that ark is nothing like the Bible. You don't go running into the doctrines of the Old Testament and then run to the doctrines of the, of the, of the New. And there are things like, you know, I shall print no marks on your body. Now, you, you can't find that in the New Testament, but it shows you what God feels about it, what God has to say about it. Paul will talk about fornicating and, and, and adultery and the Old Testament goes into it great deal. 
and you can use the two. But where the Old Testament does hurt or ruin to the New Testament, you leave the Old Testament alone. You, you build upon what the New Testament is. And there are many people out there, there are many religions out there, and, and they go with the New and Old Testament, and they, go, they don't rightly divide. One of the, you know, he who is rich, you know, he's the most blessed of all. That's the Old Testament. Well, what do you do with the Apostle Paul? A church state system as what they did in America and Massachusetts with the with the, the Puritans and the, in the uh, Congregational Church and the Catholic Church and Anglican Church and all that. That's not what we are today. We are not called in the church to go break down idols and, and burn down churches. We're called to preach the gospel. So there is, the Bible says, study show thyself, approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to rightly divide. If you wrongly divide, if you don't under the understand the dispensations then you're going to get your Bible all messed up. If you don't know what is Israel and what is the church and what is the world, you're going to get things all messed up. I mean, in the Old Testament God didn't authorize but it was taking effect. Men married multiple wives. They had a lot of problems. Paul says, let a woman have her husband and let a husband have his woman. One wife. One husband. That plain and simple. Don't go running back to the Old Testament because, because, because you're a sexual pervert. You're going to start a whole religion where we're going to have multiple wives. You do what Paul said. Paul will I'm not Paul onlyism as I've been accused of. Paul will override the doctrines of the of the Old Testament. If the Old Testament comes in contrary to what Paul says, you, you got trouble. Jesus will say in the in the Gospels, "He that endures to the end shall be saved." Well, that's not what Paul said. That's not what the later Book of Acts says. It says, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved." You gotta rightly divide the gospels. Matthew is totally wholly written to the Jews. And yet many of churches, and how many times you can walk into any Baptist church, open your open your Bibles to Matthew. You know? Well, you know. And then there's there's a scene that the mad guys and three wise men come to. You can do a lot of damage to yourself with messing with the Bible. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields. Now, corn in the Bible is not the American corn. American corn of the Native Americans didn't come to after, long after um, Christopher Columbus. This corn is just basically, it's wheat. It's a wheat. On the Sabbath day. Uh-oh, here we go. Primarily when you see Sabbath in the, the Gospels, all right, just look, here, here comes trouble. And disciples began as they went, walking to pluck the ears of corn. They're, they're doing it. They're plucking the ears of corn. They're rubbing it. They're threshing it in their hands. And then they're eating the, the, the kernels. You got to remember in the Old Testament, you come across a man who was just picking up sticks. And they stoned him by the orders of God. And the Pharisees, which set many gruesome rules and regulations against the people 
You know, you could only walk so far. Um, and here we go. Said unto him, Jesus, Behold, why do they not on the Sabbath that which is not, law, not lawful? Why are they working? You couldn't work on the Sabbath. And rubbing the, the, the ears of corn, the, the wheat, they consider to be work. Now, you can't say that, or you can say, but you cannot say, they're walking and working, because if that's the case, then the Pharisees would be in violation of the Sabbath, because evidently they're following Jesus. Every time Jesus does something on the on the Sabbath, there is the Pharisees. What, what, what are they doing? Maybe one of the things with the Pharisees on the Sabbath is mind your own business. So they're all upset because they're they're taking they're taking the wheat and rub it in their hands, and they they consider that to be work. And there were strict rules. And regulation. The Jews were primary for the Sabbath. They would prepare meals already. So all you had to do was eat. You couldn't even strike a, a, a match on the Sabbath. So these people, uh, these churches that followed the, the Old Testament and uh, the Adventist church, you know, they keep the law. Do they go home and strike a match? Or do they light a fire on their stovetop? Because that would be in violation of the law. I'm pretty sure a lot of those Adventists live further than the estimated amount that they were supposed to go. And then, and then the Sabbath, what? You know, your, your, your manservant, your maidservant, your 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 son, your daughter, your cow, your ox, were not to do anything. You get into your car that has horsepower and you make it do something. You're a violation of the Sabbath. He said unto him, have you ever read what David did? I love how, how he goes, you know, when it comes to scriptures, there. <laughs> well, haven't you studied? Haven't you read? <laughs> When he when he had a need. Now a need is not a want, and a want is not a need. David at this time has been forced out by King Saul. Saul wants him dead. David and his men are on the run. They're hungry. They're thirsty. A need is, you know, air. Some people got to get oxygen. A need is water. A need is food. David has the need of food. Or they're going to faint. And was hungered. That's the need. And they that were with him, the men that were with him. And we're going to learn, I want to show you something. Now he went into the house of God. There's no temple yet. Solomon builds it. In the days of Biathar the high priest. And did eat the showbread. That's the bread put out in the most holy place. It was it was holy. It was right. Nobody could eat that, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests. And gave also to them that were with him. So David is given showbread to eat with his men. They were not legally abound to eat such thing. Here's one of the places that David intervenes into the priesthood and God allows him. Saul, uh, Saul tried that and he, he lost his kingdom. He lost everything. He offered a sacrifice that he wasn't supposed to offer. And he said unto him, Jesus said unto him, the Sabbath was made for man. God intended the Sabbath for man to rest and remember the days of creation by the Creator. 
God on the seventh day, not on Saturday, not on Sunday. You know, is it the Saturday? Is it the, it's the seventh day. God rested from his creation. So man is to rest on the seventh day, reflect all that Jehovah did. Else you wouldn't be in mess of this evolution. And I don't know what sex I am, and, and I'm a male and a female, and all that. If you reflect what the Bible, what God says. And not man for the Sabbath. God did not intend the Sabbath. There were rules, but man was not to override and, you know, strain at the net, swallow down a camel. Because there'll be other places he says, listen, if a sheep falls into a pit, aren't you going to help them out? And there's a time that even the priests were allowed to work. They offered that morning sacrifice and the evening sacrifice on the Sabbath. Circumcision was done on the Sabbath if it was the eighth day. It was not to be made so strict. And there's a reason why Jesus said that. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also on the Sabbath. Jesus said, as far as you guys... I'm more abiding on the Sabbath than you. Now, if you just read, okay, hey, hey, look, we just read, we read Mark chapter two. All right, mark that down. I read my Bible for the year. Hallelujah, glory to God. Close your Bibles and open up the TV. Right? The Bible says, study show thyself approved unto God. What is studying? What did you just read? Oh, well, you know, David had some food and the Pharisees were upset. Boom, 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 boom. Well, let's study. Let's go to 1 Samuel, where this is at. 1 Samuel 21. Let's look at the case. Let's look at what the Bible says. Notice I am not giving you Hebrew and Greek. I'm not doing this college -y. I'm doing this plain and simple, and hopefully you understand. Now, you may be a newborn babe in Christ, and you don't understand this yet. Within time, if you, you stay faithful to God, you'll, you'll come to understand. And 1 Samuel 21, 1, then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest, okay, Mark. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David. Now, David was a fierce. David was not a man to mess with. And David was was one of the right-hand men to King Saul, including the, the son-in-law of King Saul. And then let me, you know, wait a minute. Okay, if King, I mean, excuse me. If David's coming, uh, King Saul must be mad at me. And said unto him, why art thou alone? Well, he's got his men with him. And no man's with thee, unless David has left his men behind. And he's coming by himself. Because David does have men with him. Unless he told his men, all right, you wait right here. I'll be right back. And David said to Ahimelech the priest, the king has commanded me a business. No, you're lying, David. You're out to protect your neck. But, and has said unto me, let no man know anything. Of the business we're about, I sent thee. No. This is going to cost the life of the priest pretty soon. And what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such place. David, the commander in chief of, of troops. Now, therefore, what is under thy hand? All right, so, what are you holding there? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand. So Ahimelech is holding bread. David's counted the bread, five loaves. Give me the five loaves. What there is present. So it sounds like he's got five loaves of bread underneath his hand. And the priest, Ahimelech, answered David and said, there is no common bread under my hand. So this is not regular bread, David. This is not sandwich bread. 
This is not buns. But there is hollow bread. This is showbread, David. What Jesus said. This is the showbread. If the young man, they've come up to be, now you can see, if the young man had kept himself at least from women, that's not the case. It was not allowed anybody but the priest to eat that showbread. David answered the priest and said to him, of a truth, women have kept from us about three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy. You're not holy as a priest. The bread is in a manner common. Now, what David's saying about that, and we'll look at it in a minute, is that bread you have, it's old show bread. Evan? Evidently now in the holy place on the table, there is new showbread. And I'll show you in a moment. And David said, that bread right there, it's common. Yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. Okay. So the priest gave him hallowed bread. Yes, it's hallowed bread, David. But there was no bread. There, but the show bread, there it is, that's what it is. That was taken before the Lord. It was in the most ho it was in the holy place. A Biophar has grabbed it and put hot bread in the day when it was set to taken away. So a Biophar has taken new fresh bread, put it in the holy place. He's taken the old bread out. It's still holy. David said, you know, that's just common. I can eat it now. Now, Leviticus 24. Why is this all done when it's done? There's a reason. Twenty-four five. Leviticus twenty-four five. And when thou shalt take fine flour, bake twelve cakes thereof, two tenths deal shall be in one cake. All right, you got the fresh cake. Thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row, upon the pure table before. Here's the showbread. It's fresh. It's just been made. Thou shalt put frankincense upon each roll. Like sprinkle with frankincense. That it may be on the bread for a memorial, even offering made by fire unto the Lord. So you you make 12 cakes, one tenth deal goes for one cake, you lay it out, two rows, six and six, like your Bible, 66 books of the Bible. You put frankincense on it, and you put it on the table that's in the holy place. Well, what do you do with the old bread? You take it out. Who's got the old bread? Abiathar. Now, going with Mark chapter 2. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. Biophar has gone in, put the new bread down. He comes out with the old bread. David's standing there. Hey, what's that bread underneath your arm? He goes, that's show bread. It's the Sabbath. So you know what Jesus is telling them back in Mark chapter 2? Which they don't get. Because they don't study their Bible like most Christians. He, he, he said, you know, listen, you, you, your, your, your disciples are eating them on the Sabbath. Mean, nasty disciples. And Jesus goes into the story of David. Why? The priest just made fresh the showbread. It takes a lot more work to make showbread than the, 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 the disciples taking wheat and throw it in their hands. They had to fire up the oven and everything. And then the priest has to take it, bring it into the holy place, put it in order, sprinkle the franco, you see all the working and doing the franco says, uh, and take out the old bread. And lo and behold, there's David who's on the run 
on the Sabbath. Get that? And he asked for that bread, which is not common. It's the show bread for he and his men. Picturing Jesus as a type of David and a David as a type of Jesus with his men, the disciples. And they end up eating the sacred showbread on the Sabbath, which is not lawful. And fire and, and lightning did not come down from heaven. And David lives a lot more years of his life. Why? Well, David was a man of God. David had a need, 25. Maybe those disciples, because it's, it's another day. Maybe they haven't had any food that whole day. And the Sabbath was made for man and not man made for the Sabbath. And the Lord is the Lord of the Sabbath. It's not so strict. And you're going to come to the time that when Jesus dies, is buried and rose again, and as you go to the transition of the book of Acts, from the law to grace. In the church age today, we're not under the Sabbath. Sabbath is coming to a halt. You will be under the Sabbath in the tribulation period and in the millennium, but not under grace. And there'll be many, there's, there's churches who kind of picturistic, you know, the Sabbath day. And all. No, the Sabbath day is the seventh day. When you go to church, it's the first day. It's amazing. You know, the first day of the week, they all gather together. And all of a sudden, miraculously, the seventh day becomes the first day in the Baptist church. And then the Baptists become, uh, you know, uh, Adventists. <laughs> like they become Catholics in Easter, Catholics in Christmas and all that. By the way, this year is the only year that you can celebrate the Resurrection Sunday and the Passover. Passover this year is on a Wednesday. Three days and three nights is the first day of the week, which also happens to be Easter. That's rare and odd, but typically that don't happen like that. So you can go ahead and call it Resurrection Sunday. But we're not under a Jewish calendar. We're under a Polish, I mean, a Catholic, Popish Bible. And I know for sure our days and all that are not correct, biblically. 